I'm Cassidy, and I'm here at the North Texas Comic Book Show. Let's go get into some trouble. I'm Cassidy, and I'm here with Kalula Cosplay, cosplaying the Huntress. Tell us about why you picked this particular character and this particular design. Sure. Um, I'm a big DC fan, as most nerds are. And actually, the first time I ever saw Huntress, I just really liked her because purple is my favorite color. So I was like, hey, let me, let me look into that character. And I read some of her comics and some of the trades and just really, really liked her. Do you have a webpage or anything that you'd like out there? Yeah, you could find me on Facebook at Kalula Cosplay. I post lots of progress pictures and all my costumes are right there. Now, when it went into your cosplay? Tears. Uh, it, it took about four months to build. The bodysuit was commissioned by my friend, the Geeky Seamstress, and I made all of the armor and the belt and everything else, the cape, everything else on my body was made. The, the armor's all constructed with warbla. The belt is all real leather. What was the hardest part about making it? Probably the armor. I had never made armor before, so it was a learning experience. And as soon as I finished all the armor, I looked at it and went, well, now I can do it better. What advice would you give to people who are learning to make armor or wanting to make armor for future cosplay? Start small. Start with a project that requires minimal armor so you could learn to build those pieces. Don't pick a character that's fully armored. Even, even this was a lot for a first armor project, and it's not all that much. What is your favorite part about cosplaying this character? I really, really like doing photos as Huntress because, again, I get to be really, like, snarly and kind of mean, and I don't have to look all cutesy, which is good because I don't do cutesy very well. <laughs> Let's talk about your weapon. Okay, so the weapon, I bought a crossbow toy on Amazon, and then I uh, painted it all, and I strengthened this bow part here with some warbla and made the arrows and kind of just revamped the whole thing from a toy. Any I was all hand painted oh. and dry brushed for some cool weathering and yeah, foam tips because cons. <laughs> Did you do that with all of the purple? Yes, actually all of the armor is painted with Angelus leather paint because that was showing up much more vibrantly than my purple acrylics. So. Yeah, all of the leather pieces are painted with Angelus, and all of the armor is painted with Angelus. Using Warbla, are there any things you would recommend or not recommend with it? I understand it can be a difficult material sometimes, especially with heat. Um, yeah, so what I did, and I got this off someone's blog, was I made what I call a heat board. And I took a foam board and covered it in insulation tape. So that way I do all my projects on that and I'm not gonna damage my tables or my floors or whatever surface I'm working on. That's a, that's a big one because the heat gun can burn through carpet in seconds and then you're screwed. So give yourself a nice heat resistant working surface and uh, it also helps to keep bowls of cool water around in case you burn your fingers, you can just dip them in for a second. Uh, it's, it's actually a pretty easy material once you get the hang of it, but definitely do a little bit of practice before you start diving into a project. Was there a lot of learning that went into this cosplay? Yes. Uh, I, I really think that if I was to do it again today, this whole thing would look at least three times better because I learned as I went on the way. I had never worked with leather. I had just barely worked with Warbla. Warbla is a thermoplastic that's become extremely popular with cosplayers. Uh, it comes in sheets, and once you heat it up, it's fully malleable, you could mold it, it sticks to itself, you could build all sorts of projects with it, and when it cools back down, it hardens again. So you could hear all of this armor is really tough. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to have an interview with us. Yeah. It looks fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> I'm here with Sans and Papyrus, and we are here to talk about their cosplays. So, what got you to want to cosplay Sans? Well, uh, I had heard about the game Undertale through uh, a YouTube channel known as Game Grumps. From there, we just started planning out the costumes. And why did you want to cosplay Papyrus? I generally relate to Py Papyrus more, but uh, just more fun of a character, and I was like, that's the one I want to do. What do you think is the hardest part of playing this character? <sighs> 
Um, you just have to always come up with, if somebody's talking to you and you're supposed to be in character most of the time, which I believe when you're cosplaying, you should be in character. Um, you just gotta come up with different material to say, like uh, just basically improv. Uh, as she said, I'm a little bit more laid back, so I really enjoy being sans and I like being kind of the comic relief. And what all have you made on these costumes, including um, Flowey here? Well, I created Flowey from scratch. And as for these costumes, uh, what I like to do is I like to go find pieces that are already made online and I go and alter them, such as I altered some of these gloves to fit better since they're like children's gloves but to be able to work on phones. Uh, I altered this coat so that it had a fur lining. Um, I made the armor for papyrus, made it out of EVA foam and plastic dip, and of course made the spaghetti, and uh, we got our masks from, uh, we got them commissioned by Heather Henry, who used to be on Face Off. What did it take to make Flowey? Where did you come up with the design? I have a tutorial online that I did for it, but uh, what I did for him is I went and search, first researched I wanted to make a Muppet kind of puppet because I didn't want to make just a sock puppet that I could have slapped on uh, pedals. Uh, so I went looking around and researching. There's actually a place online called uh, projectpuppet.com. From there, they will sell you patterns of different kinds of uh, puppets. He is actually a rolly puppet, which is more of a hybrid between a Muppet and a sock puppet. And from there, uh, they give you the whole pattern and all that. And I went and got fleece and floral wire and different kind of felt and foam pieces. What would you say your favorite part about the costumes <clears throat> are? Uh, just the little tidbits of people going, oh, it's Sans. Oh, and it's papyrus. Oh, and it's flowy. I like the color schemes just so it's like bright and everyone you just like suddenly turn to go see it. We don't have an actual paper mache mask like you see all the people have on, which uh, they do really good job. So we're we're the only ones with these kinds of masks. All right, being an eight bit game, where do you get your reference pictures? Well, from there's there's parts of it to where the game since it's eight bit. But then when you go into the fighting sequence, you can see a lot more of the details. And some people had gone in there and done some color references of what they think it would be. And we did a few research because uh, for Sans, for instance, he has either a light blue jacket or just a regular blue jacket or white, blue, or pink slippers. And so we just kind of chose what we thought would be best. And I thought having all white or all blue on me or all whatever would just clash too much. That's why I had like the pink to kind of throw everything off. All right, so this was Cassidy with Undertale Cosplayers. Thank y'all so much for letting me talk to you. What inspired you to cosplay this character? Well, always been one of my favorites. About the armor, what did you use to create it? How long did it take? Uh, actually, it didn't list didn't a week, but it took me, you know, a few hours here and there. EVA foam, some actually some old skulls for Halloween I just cut up, uh, paper paint. <laughs> How'd you figure out the design? Uh, pretty much. Well, I got I have a boot. I actually have a boot in the house that goes up to here. Mm -hmm. I just pretty much pulled the mold off of it, kind of, and just built from there. Glued my foam together, actually, so it's shaped to my boot. It's rare to see a Lobo out, so it's... I get that a lot when I'm walking through. <laughs> a lot of people confuse me for kids. What would you say was the hardest part about creating this costume? Pretty much just the armor. Just these right here, just fold, making it fit and form. Because that stuff doesn't fold easily. Now, did you know how to do this already? Or did you just kind of come up with it? Stuff I picked up here and there when I was, you know, YouTube, looking up stuff and just things like that. What's your favorite part of the costume? I, like... Doing the costume or wearing? Wearing, like, doing, whatever. I like making it. I hardly ever, I really don't do much of the cosplaying. I do the making. Like, I make my, my girlfriend's things and some friends, if they have, if they want some stuff, I'll help them out. What tips would you give people about crafting and making armor and boots? You're going to make a lot of mistakes. Style small. Don't do anything too big. Don't get overwhelmed. I'm doing a Hellboy in the next in June, and it's going to be the comic book one. Thank you for your time and no letting us interview you. We appreciate it greatly and awesome job on the cosplay. Appreciate it. Thanks for bringing Lobo out too. I, I had one kid notice me. He's like, hey Lobo. I'm like, finally. <laughs> finally. See, that with older guys, but hey. It's still, it's something. It's something. You know, you know. Now, what 
inspired the Valentine's Day art? Like, I wanted to do something that was like pink and white, so I saw some images of, you know, somebody wearing a leather pink and white costume. So I was like, okay, I'll eventually get to that. There was an uh, artist named Artist Abe who came up with a variant of an adorable pink and white Harley Quinn. After seeing that, I was just like, I have to do this for fan days. Now, why Harley? Well, I lo I've loved Harley ever since I was little with the, the animated series. Harley was my favorite. I love Joker. And, you know, I love Harley because, you know, she's out there. She's ditzy. She's crazy. Now, tell me a little bit about your costume. Did you make this yourself? What pieces did you do? <laughs> I made the entire costume. Oh, my <laughs> Except minus the shoes. I painted one of them. Um, just the material, it's like 2% spandex. So the rest of the material is like Rylon and po polyester. I was trying to find something that, was, that fit the color of the... A picture that I found online. I made every piece of this. It took me about three and a half weeks. It, it was definitely frustrating, but it's one of my favorite costumes up to date. It, it looks really good. Tell us about setting the makeup, getting the right colorations, that kind of stuff. It took me over a year to perfect the makeup. So, you know, th there was a tutorial that uh, another cosplayer by Anaz Anazni Voles, she makes a, an awesome tutorial on how to apply face makeup. You know, I followed it, I, I, meet, I use Mayron Clown Paint White, uh, I put it on, smooth it in one direction, not multiple, and then I set it with a powder so that the makeup doesn't smudge. Overall, it looks fantastic. Thank you. Now, what tips could you give? You know, if you're doing hand stitching, you know, it doesn't hurt to check out videos on YouTube because that's what I did. For first timers, I'd suggest patterns <laughs> just so it can help you out. Now, are there any other future cosplays in the works? Um, right now, uh, for fan days, I'm finishing up a mask for Gwenpool. Uh, Dallas Comic Con fan days, uh, it's being held at the Urban Convention Center. February 13th and 14th. Other costumes, I'm going to be putting together an Amy Farrah Fowler <laughs> from Big Bang Theory. That's awesome. We look forward to seeing those in the future. Oh, for sure. Thank you for so much for taking your time out of your day in the convention to talk with us. So, why Darkwing Duck? Uh, probably one of my favorite Disney uh, animated uh, cartoons of the 90s. Um, just carried over over the years. They don't make them like these anymore. And I actually had gone to uh, Space uh, City Con, uh, and I actually saw someone who, uh, a vendor who was dressed sim similar as Darkwing, and I thought, oh my God, I have to do that. And I was like, it would be perfect for me because I'm such a big fan of the show. So this year I have my good friend Chris. She, uh, she's a really great seamstress. And I told her, hey, I want to do this can you help me make this come true? And she's like, yeah, sure. So we got together and we've been trying different types of materials that we want to use. And uh, so far, this is the, the first outcome that we're doing now. And it's a, like I say, today is a test run. So, so far, so good. So it's one of the reasons I wanted to do this cosplay because it was just one of my favorite uh, uh, cartoons of the 90s. It's unique. You don't see much of it out. You don't. And that's one of the things I like when I do cosplay is I like to pick something you don't normally see. You, know, you see a lot of Deadpools, you see a lot of Batmans, you know, I could do something that's offbeat that I'm like, hey, that's kind of cool. You don't see that very often, so I like doing cosplays like that. What all pieces in your costume did you make? Well, unfortunately, I have uh, sewing thumbs, so I, I can't really sew things, um, though it is completely all handmade. Um, that was fantastic. My friend Chris, she has made the entire thing herself from top to bottom, of course, except for the shoes. Um, the gun was made by another friend, uh, Charles, Charles mm -hmm. Protections, which was uh, 3D printed. Oh, wow. So he 3D printed this to all and painted it and everything. Oh, wow, that's a lot lighter so, than it looks. Yes, it is, and I was very, very pleased with it. Just an awesome job he did, so very happy about this gun, too. So. How comfortable is the costume? Um, it's pretty comfortable. It's, <laughs> it's lightweight, it's a little warm. Do you think you would be able to survive in, in like 100 degree Texas weather? As long as it's inside. <laughs> I would not last very long outside, no. All right. Thank you so much for stopping and let us interview you. And thank you. It's Appreciate it. great to see something unique thank and you very much. awesome. I'm Cassidy here interviewing the Western Joker. <laughs> you are the winner, our first place winner of the North Texas Comic Book Show contest. Yeah. How yeah. does that feel? Tell me about the experience that is. Like Unbelievable. Uh, 
I won first years ago at their very first show when I was Rorschach. What inspired this one? Joker has always been one of my favorite all-time comic book characters ever. And I've always been obsessed with crossover cosplays. And this was actually what inspired this, my very, very first costume for my very, very first Dallas Comic Con. And everyone loved it. That was, this was my first con. So I realized I had to bring it back, recreate that feeling that I had at the very, very first con. Now, when assembling this costume, was there anything that was like ridiculously difficult or something you didn't expect? To be honest, everything was pretty smooth. The one thing I was worried about, the wig, my hair, all this nonsense. Everything pretty much worked out. Finding the duster was a little hard. Now, did you paint the duster or did you just yes. find it as is? I found a brown duster way bigger than what I needed it to be, but I brought it in as much as possible. Yeah, I painted it only one layer so it would leave the cracks to give it that leather hide look. These boots, first boots I ever bought in my life, this belt and belt buckle, it's my father's belt. Chaps, or my grandfather's I'm borrowing. This was bought from a thrift store and this was bought at a costume shop. Very nice. What advice would you give to new cosplayers, especially when in, they want to enter a cosplay contest? Never doubt yourself. The moment you doubt yourself, that's when it doesn't become fun. I didn't even think I was going to play, so I was just having fun with it. And anytime you feel the butterflies in your stomach, you're not nervous, you're excited. So you view that playing the character as a cosplay insists is a very important part? There's a lot of people out there with stage fright, which is completely understandable. They can take amazing photos, but when you try to talk to them as that character, they'll just talk to you like a normal person, especially when a little kid runs up to you saying, Joker, can I take a photo? That's what it's about for me. And that's what it's about for a lot of cosplayers out there is the kids to meet people they really look up to. And that's one of the most incredible feelings ever. Awesome, thank you so much for taking the time. Out thank of you. Day. Congratulations again. Thank you so much.